you just lose abruptly and sort of dramatically. But that doesn't really matter. It it's still you still lose your same, you know, minus <laughs> 20 LP on the ladder and you move on. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think I think the the figure is around 85 uh percent. I think it's it's very high. It, I think that's yeah. it's close to the figure if it, if not the figure. Uh that's been figured out with that. Um but no, we, I mean, we are going to not see Fiora first thing, right? We're going to see the Talia deck instead going up against Aphelios TF. Mm -hmm. And um, there is a landmark to kick things off. It's going to be Ancient Preparations. We'll see what this predict uh, ends up being. It's going to be... We'll see what the pick was. Just a second. It looked like Star Shaping was offered. We'll see it when it gets drawn on the next turn. Spirit Fire uh, was one of the options as well. Looks like Hourglass is going to be the choice. Try and just protect the the Talia or the Aphelios down the line. Yep, and I mean we see the we see the mind meld in hand for Squeebie already, but mind meld potentially can be awkward with a bit if there's a big sparkle fly because if you block in the front of that chain, you might be able to chump block and live. Considering a lot of what Squeebie is putting forth is not necessarily elusive like it would be. And Twisted Fate Fizz. We also don't see a Veiled Temple, which is uh, really the the grease to the wheels of the rest of the deck. So, um, Squeeby, I mean, does have the Aphelios out and is going to be able to crescendo early, but not quite, uh, not quite fully set up yet. Yeah, the early crescendo is going to be nice, though. Get the box bus out. That will be able to deal with the Xenotype Researcher uh, very cleanly. Still keeps the Challenger intact as well. And uh, we'll see how Tanya starts to develop this board. Xenotype has, you know, been played, which does mean that Aphelios can look for crescendo and uh, hopefully for Tanya find a Sparklefly that has been buffed, but having a Sparklefly in hand already is not great. And we'll, we'll see if this can actually start to build up steam or if Squeeby is just going to take full control of the board. Yep. And this is an interesting play by Squeeby. So um, Squeeby went for the Crescendum last turn, which normally you wouldn't necessarily want to do, but given the open attack makes a lot of sense. Squeeby looking to put the pressure on, and this is the game plan that Squeeby is going for here. We see a bit of an off turn for Tanya, of course, going to be able to get additional pumps with the researchers but squeeby is now going to be able to freely develop a twisted fate or potentially could develop a uh temple here gonna go for the twisted fate and just kill the aphelios and the these are high tempo plays from squeeby you know maybe a little bit um you know not the traditional line with aphelios because you know you would normally want to wait to play that crescendo until this turn so that you'd be generating an additional moon weapon but these well, high tempo plays might go for it I gotta stop you here for a second. This crescendum has the potential to just be backbreaking because yes, Xenotype is summoned again. Okay, it only got one buff. There was a, there was a chance because it is resummoned yeah. that we could see two buffs yep. on to this Sparkle Fly, and that could have just been you know lights out for Squeeby well, with a seven eight Sparkle Fly on board. But except for the fact that Felios can uh, gravitum it That's forever. <laughs> That's true. Gravitum could could potentially completely turn that around. But we didn't even get that scenario. It is just a 4-5. Right. That's manageable. That is still manageable. 1-2 Sparklefly not going to be doing really much yep. at all. And uh, it's back to being uh, a very manageable game for Squeebie. But Spiritfire may be a card that starts to have a lot of potential as we see this board get wider and wider. Yep. Uh, potentially able to take out a lot of these because it wouldn't kill the box to bus anyway, and the box to bus is the one that's going to be taking all these buffs. Mm -hmm. Okay, Squeeby passing there. A little interesting. I mean, could have gotten a, a temple buff, mana, and an additional moon weapon. Opted not to go for it last turn. But the Aphelios plus Temple plus a Twisted Fate on board that's also just kind of passively there right now. Uh, it's a pretty tough combo to deal with for any deck, of course. Yeah, I mean, I think that this might be a Spiritfire turn to deal with the Aphelios and the Twisted Fate. 
Um, it'll also kill off the the spacey sketcher. It'll kill off the other one, uh, one mana two one. Uh, it is pretty decent there. It looks like we're having a little bit of lag here on uh, Squeeby's stream, so we're gonna try yep. and get a perspective for you guys in just a moment here. Um, but no, I still think that this is a spot that not everything has gone right for wannabe straight away. Yeah. But that spirit fire is a potential comeback opportunity, especially on yeah. this turn. And we'll see when we get back into this game uh, if it ended up being played down on this turn, because I think this was a decent spot. Yeah, I mean, killing a, uh, if you could cast a spell that kills a Twisted Fate and an Aphelios, I mean, how much mana would you not pay for that? Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah you'd, like, pay, you'd pay a lot of mana. Yeah, you'd pay pretty much any amount of mana yeah, there. there it was, and, it was uh, cast. It was cast, and that is a sad face from Squeeby. Now, Squeeby could um, generate a um, Aphelios weapon and save either Aphelios or Twisted Fate if he wanted to. If he if he made a um a severum or even an infernum that would give additional health to either twisted fate or aphelios right but now i believe that Just, he decides against gone. it yeah. yeah yeah it's not gonna be able to happen And now, I mean, the, the board's starting to look a little bit better for Tanya. Tanya having Star Shaping, which is just kind of a, a five mana, maybe win the game card uh, oh. a lot of the time. So, yep. you know, this spot's looking better and better for the Sharima list. Especially, yeah, just drawing your win conditions with those uh, Star Shaping. Yeah, absolutely. But notably, no, uh, no landmark for Talia, so... Just kind of a five mana two four blank right now, which is uh, maybe part of the reason that we don't see a ton of Talia play. It has the high rolls, but also the low roll is you're playing a five mana two four with zero abilities. That is yeah, just embarrassing. I mean, <laughs> you know, it, it, if Tanya finds a Veiled Temple, then suddenly it starts to look a lot better, right? But until then, as you right. mentioned, it's just kind of... It's a five mana two four. We don't we don't really play those. No, we don't really that, play five mana two four vanillas. Yeah, a uh, a classic um, MTG adage is: Does the card pass the vanilla test? Where if would you play this card if it didn't have its ability? And uh, the answer for T Talia is just absolutely windmill slam no. Um, granted, it does have a very powerful ability, but it absolutely fails the vanilla test. Not the only criteria for a playable card, but. It is certainly uh, one of them to consider. Yep, star shaping. Living Legends picked up instantly. Classic. Going to heal that spark of fly up. Just looking for more wind conditions, you know, playing star shaping, which is wind condition the card, but Living Legends is even more so that. I just should be able to find you lots of different options yeah. to choose from. Even potentially, you can find a lot of low cost things that you can start slamming to the ground as well. Yep, and here, Crescendum getting played, potentially. I'm going to go for the Spell Thief first. Finds a Crescendum. Oh, and a Spirit Fire. Yeah, Spirit Fire pretty strong. Crescendum would mean you could chill. get both box to put, uh, box to pie out on this turn. Oh, get both box to pie and then open with Mind Meld. Yeah. Depending on how big that mind meld is, uh, that, we might be in business. That doesn't seem bad. Uh, I'm curious how many spells have actually been played. Well, you can fire off an additional two if you, just for fun if you wanted to. That's a level to Felios. Oh, right. The, st the stolen moon weapon counts towards, playing, the counts towards leveling of Felios. That's not fair. Yeah, I mean, Crescendum was probably the, the best pull other than maybe Star Shaping. It yeah. seems like it, it, it definitely was good in this spot. Try and set things up for Squeeby. I didn't catch how much damage was on that uh, Mind Meld either. Six. It's a, it's six, so it's not huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would technically present lethal if wa Wannabe played nothing. Um, I mean, you could buff it a little bit more, right? Ooh, we have 10 mana. We could go Crescent Strike into a 7 
mind meld, which seems like that is the clearest yeah. way to do a ton of to do the most damage, right? That seems like not a bad line even uh, in Although, this spot. This is close because Calibrum plus Yibin Warned is is pretty close to the same uh, like spread of damage because you're going to be pulling one away. Can also open up here, get a Gravitum, but then we're off of the Mind Meld plan. Which is, I mean, fine. You don't need to be on the Mind Meld plan this turn. Yeah. I mean, oh, wait. Also with Mana Temple, you still have Mana. Yeah. I haven't done the math on it yet, but I think there are other... Like, he can still play more than this. Yeah, if he... If he plays Crescent Strike here, although... I don't know that you would now if you just use that Crescendum. Or, sorry, that Calibrum. You could... So if you we could go... Crescent... Gold card. <laughs> would still give you exactly enough mana for... Mind meld. You've been warned will waste the mana re uh, refill, I believe. Correct? Yes, it, it will. Yeah. So. That means. Oh, chat did the math for me. Cool. If you crescent here, it would refill mana into enough for both EB warned and mind meld. Yes. Yeah, because it would refill to eight. It would go to six, refill to yep. eight. Yeah. yeah. So this was so that uh, probably was the most optimal line, especially yep. because the mind meld is being committed or well, potentially being committed here. Yeah. So that was, yeah, that was certainly the most optimal line uh, that existed. Yep. Yeah. This was just a little bit of a, uh, a, a soggy slopster as we like to call it, but that's okay. <laughs> I, I don't like calling it that to be honest. <laughs> As we, as the entire uh, Giant Slayer Fight Night staff, love to call it the Soggy Slops. There's a little bit of a, a sloppy play, um, but that's okay. <laughs> Squeeby still going to be getting a big mind meld off here. Still going to be presenting lethal uh, pretty safely here. Now, we see that Wannabe has a, a number of options to prevent that from happening. Um, I guess, namely, one option to prevent that from happening which is hush which will be enough yeah we'll see i mean two blocks and a hush as you and as you mentioned is enough to survive uh in this spot especially because the sparkle fly is still up there will be the, li the life steal as well on top of that yep now we could still see uh gravitum played here so again a little weird that that would be played afterwards um nope, looks like squeebie not gonna go for the gravitum play so yeah uh i mean he's gotta know that this is likely not ending the game i mean i guess hush is really the only card that's stopping it Okay, this ordering is fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the ordering's good. Okay, hush. Okay, yeah, sparkle fly. sparkle fly. Does mean the sparkle fly can get duplicated by Talia and the heels can start coming through. Yeah, that is true. Okay, five mana, two, four blank has been activated. <laughs> Now, you know, we hate to harp on it. Okay, I don't really hate to harp on it. Um, no, you love harping on things. No, we all hate it, Casa. We hate harping on the fact that if, you know, the, the optimal play we talked about before, that would have resulted <laughs> in, I think, lethal. Even just playing the Graviton beforehand would have been lethal through that line of play. Now, the, I'm not sure if there was the possibility to put a Talia out and change that, but what happened certainly was not lethal, obviously, considering we're still here, and with eight life, steel, power, elusive coming through, um, 
as well as his living legends we might still we might be in a place where sweeby is going to fall behind this crescent strike can prevent the life steal from happening though yeah crescent strike gonna stop the life steal uh might be able to salvage the game as well it looks like there's another trickster in hand so we go second trickster and uh the one mana three one buff I think that's enough. I mean, that is nine. Gravitum, though, actually still in hand. So, yeah. no, I don't think, uh, I don't know that Tanya can get there anymore. I think the open attack maybe needed to come out to try and avoid any stuns. Especially since one of the stuns was public information. So adding the trickster there, all that did was make it so that you're getting in with a trickster versus a sparkle fly. Just as, just hand like with known information right like there um so a little bit of a uh a, an interesting play to say the least but as it stands uh wannabe attacking for three squeeby can just press okay and, and move on with his life Yeah, I mean, I think Squeebee might be back in the driver's seat. I think, you know, Tanya had a spot maybe uh, to start pulling this back, but now two life left. Mm. Gravitum so, so can set up the stuns. This is going to be awkward be, be, that the in Gravitum front. was played first because now there's a 50-50 chance that the Twisted Fate gold card, if that's the line you're going for, kills the wrong Sparklefly. Yeah, I wonder... Yeah. I wonder if he, he's just not going to gold card now because he has Infernum and he has Challengers. So you just pull one of the Sparkle Flies all the way to the right. Sure. He's set up to just Infernum on the left side and, and call it a day. Yeah, but also, like, you're, uh, you know, double stunning or killing something that's already going to be stunned next turn. Like, you're gaining no value. If the gold card is still if the, the, the play, I'm saying then he, that was probably incorrect. not playing yeah. gold card. But yeah, yeah. You're, you're right. If he does gold card, then yeah, that's a little bit weird. But this was the direction. Oh, Chad is saying that the gold card would hit the 3-3 three, three here because I guess gold card won't hit a stunned unit already. So that makes sense. But also, that's not good. I guess the gold card wouldn't be good anyway. Yeah, the gold card wouldn't be good at all. Okay. That's what we've that's what we've decided here. <laughs> A little surprised that the temple is sticking around here. I feel like we are in the twilight turns. Uh and I don't know I I would rather go a little bit wider here than uh keep a temple for next turn as it stands i mean i think oh actually is is squeeby actually going to be able to present lethal i think so i think he is yeah I think uh, the open should be able to present, but there is a star shaping on mm -hmm. that far left side for Tanya Wannabe. Yep. Might be able to hold on a little bit longer. The Gravitum stun going to continue. Open attack. Potentially going to go out. You see the star shaping maybe first. Yeah, you can star shaping pretty freely. Infernum at least will open up some doors. Now it may open you up to, um, you know, it opens you up to development punishes as well, but it at least is opening up a lethal threat door pretty wide. Star shaping is pretty free in terms of priority here.
it's games like these that are the reason I would never bring an Aphelios deck to, <laughs> to a tournament because I just like there's like look at look at this turn right now. There's like 30 different lines that Squeeby could take, and some of them are and like if you take the wrong one, you can get massively punished potentially. And it's just like this is the type of pressure I don't want to play multiple rounds in a row. This is not what I want. This is why I just I just you know I, I go face. Me me too stupid, me give up. <laughs> well, we do see a myriad of moon weapons coming out. Calibre, I'm gonna go try and take down this Sparkle Fly, the Infernum, onto the big Boxtopus. Gonna be punching down, trying to get that last two points of damage. As we see the star shaping come out, but no, I feel like it's gonna, gonna be a little too late here. Yeah, there's going to be seven presented with just the Overwhelm Boxtopus. Granted, there are pump spells to prevent that, but then there's also everything else that's happening. <laughs> Pale Cascade, not going to save the Sparkle Fly yeah, there's yet. there's two of them. Other. Spell Thief into a Hush, potentially. Should, Be pretty good. Should ensure everything here. There it is. Yeah, finds the Hush. Yep, and now none of the spells that... Oh, I want to be can only cast the uh, Shape Stone it has been reduced and that won't do anything so this should just be a squeeby attack into a victory i don't know that there's a way to mess this up that is presenting lethal and we see it that's gonna be good enough squeeby just needs to hit the okay button Only one mana remaining. There's nothing that this deck can do to stop this. And that is going to be game one. Going over to Squeeby, taking it yep. with Aphelios TF. Shurima deck not able to come through in the end and find that win. And now, going to have to be two chances at TLC for Squeeby. He would just have to either beat the Shurima deck or he would have to beat the all-in Fiora with the TLC. And, you know... This is one of the top four decks right now for a reason. I think it's got good odds going up against these kind of li little bit of jank that we see being brought uh, <laughs> by Wannabe. And, and you know, th there is opportunity for it to come back and beat these uh, powerhouse decks. But overall, yeah. if you're if you're a betting man, you generally are going to bet on what has been working. And that would be the TLC. Yeah, I mean, this... Uh, I mean the Talia deck does, of course, have the Hush, which can stop a Watcher turn. But besides that, I mean, you can start shaping into something to deal with it. You can... There's not even, like, the small... There's not even the small invokes, um, you know, that Zoe would normally be producing or a, a Fangs or something like that. So you don't even have Equinox. You don't even have the option to get an Equinox here, so... Really, a lot of the um, axes with which the Aphelios Talia deck is going to be attacking, the TLC deck just doesn't care about. And we see a, right. a good amount of the combo already generated. We're one uh, Spectral Matron away from just having it entirely on the side of Squeeby. Yeah, and I want to take a quick moment to, to shout out BBG. Thank you so much for the, hey, the raid, bringing your community over. Big I know Raiders. We've We've had we've had a uh, big burble god on the uh, the channel a couple of times playing uh, in our times. fight night tournaments, and uh, absolutely love to have him around. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He does have a W. Always love having a uh, BBG around and a uh, big fan. Thank you guys for coming in and hanging out. We are in the losers bracket round two right now. Squeeby versus Tanya Wannabe. For those just joining us, Squeeby is up one game, but Tanya Wannabe has a pretty cool lineup right now of Aphelios Talia alongside an all-in Fiora deck, uh, which we actually have uh, wrong on the, the sheet here. It, it should actually be Demacia Freljord. We have Shadow Isles on there. We'll get that corrected in just a second as well. Um, 
but yeah, we it's are a spooky deck. It is a spooky deck. <laughs> it is. It is a very spooky deck. Yep. In general, we did see it take a very quick gain early on today. As Squeeby is now just going to be setting up the combo, like you mentioned, having a lot of the pieces already available. And Tanya you want to be on the other side. Uh, you know, not having that Veiled Temple once again to set up for the Talia, which I think is the combo that we've seen look really good for this deck when it was, you know, turn four Temple, turn five Talia mm -hmm. uh, to, to really get things rolling. Yeah, not even seeing these Xenotype researchers. Um, so really, Tanya just playing with, is just playing fair with a bunch of like medium cards right now, which is certainly not where you want to be going. Um, but what I will say about this match in general, not this specific game matchup, if Tanya is able to take this one, the while it, normally a Freljord Shadow Isles control deck you would think would be quite good against uh, the Mono Fiora deck in general, it's actually kind of a, a, a standoff because Squeebie will be looking to weave in the Vengeance, but uh tanya will be looking to cast the unyielding spirit in response and if that uh interaction misfires for squeebie the game is kind of just over uh kind of at least there's still a couple of other options for it but it becomes very very hard and tanya knows there are exactly just the vengeance to be able to deal with it um i guess you also can have the entombs if there's a lissandra out or a um three sisters but there are very few answers to it yeah yeah i mean there's very few outs and i mean if we get to that we'll have to first get through this sharima list as we do have talia copying the preservarium gonna go for more draw yeah just trying to get to some of the bigger pieces get to that veiled temple later down the line we see the xenotype researcher in hand as well start getting the buffs for the sparkle flies the way this deck kind of functions is it's going to get that xenotype researcher trying to get the buffs on the sparkle flies there are only 12 total units 12 total things that can be hit and uh then use crescendum to pull out those sparkle flies with the big buffs trying to utilize it that way as we see a lot yep. of draw coming through all right Bailed temple, temple actually gets found as a uh, maybe drawn a little bit too much there tanya want to be gonna burn a spirit fire that's fine need spirit fire is a non-factor in this matchup and if anything you want it to get burned um here you see the xenotype come out and you know obviously Tano, tanya wannabe needs to get that xenotype online so that you know this aphelios can come out we can crescendo a sparkle fly that is hopefully big and can actually start putting a clock on the squeebie all right it is going to be a predict okay and a leveled up to leah We'll start rolling at least a little bit with the landmarks. Yeah, Especially I mean, failed temple will come down fairly soon. Yeah, Talia leveled up is is a at least semi threatening unit. Um, not really much you can do. You can't really block it, and if you don't block it, you're taking what nine to the face. Yeah, considering actually a vengeance, but that would get completely destroyed by an hourglass. It would at least, you know, gain you some life, but that is certainly not the ideal usage of a uh, vengeance there. And three threaded volleys. Yep. So now would just kill Trundle, or like you said, nine to the dome. I would say that this um you know was a mistake to wait but actually uh the damage just doesn't happen if talia is dead or gone so this was fine perfectly fine to be able to wait here like you mentioned this does get blown out by the uh Ooh, okay by the hourglass shape stone as well to kill the trundle yep he might as well um trundle is the secondary win condition which a lot of times it doesn't matter, and in this case, we see it. We're one, we're one card away from it not mattering. Um, we're one uh, 
fading memories or another even another trundle will um generate a uh, another pillar and we'll have four full pillars <laughs> there it is yeah there he is Failed temple, finally going to come down. Yep. Not going to be duplicated. We're not seeing like triple temple like we saw earlier from uh, from Tanya Wannabe, but no. the Ophelioses in hand are going to be able to start to potentially generate pressure, but also just this Talia has the uh, capacity to get cranked up a lot here. Yeah. And we do see Tanya has the hush, of course, is going to be able to uh, get through to a Gravitum um relatively quickly so um squeeby not necessarily going to be able to kill with the watcher kill unless actually next turn squeeby can play all of the uh yeah can actually play all of the pillars excuse me level up lissandra play lissandra then play a zero cost watcher mm. which um might be able to be enough on the open attack depending yeah and xenotype hit onto the sparkle fly so we do have a four or five sparkle fly onto the board a pretty big board for this uh potential open attack here um from tanya wannabe mm -hmm. now the trundle could take a good block like if the aphelius is committed trundle gets to take a good block into aphelius but there's a lot of damage that would be going down and i'm curious if it would be worth it or if there is just the consideration from Tanya Wannabe that, hey, I need this Aphelios to stay alive because if the Watcher combo comes down, that is my lifeline in this game with this uh, second Aphelios in hand. Yeah, it, it, Tanya basically needs to keep open the ability to Gravitum this turn. Um, Squeeby, I think, is going to be trying to prevent... Uh, I was going to try to get Tanya to commit as much mana as possible uh, while also not dying so that, you know, if Tanya, for whatever reason, tapped out, you can play all of the pillars and then get that Watcher out open attack. But I have to think that Tanya Wanabe is just not going to do that. That would be opening yourself up to a loss, I think. But we'll see. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I think... Tanya with the hush with the uh the second of Elios, like these are the things that are keeping you alive in this game, basically nullifying Squeeby's win condition. And now you've picked up a great beyond. There's your own win condition that yep. you're you're not gonna have to worry about trying to race down too fast. Great beyond should be able to, to clean that up. And um, you know, Squeeby, I, I think that Tanya has the redundancy and has the yep different outs that should mean that tanya wannabe should take this down but it's not guaranteed just yet it is still a very close uh matchup between these two yeah i mean tanya realizes that their lose condition is squeeby sticking a watcher and open attacking and uh they're playing around that which is which is great um you know the nightmare scenario of squeeby getting all four pillars into leveled up Lissandra into zero cost watcher is a reality and Tanya is able to play around it. Yeah. If only for Squeeby, the Lissandra had been on the board already and this watcher could be played this turn. Oh, it can still be played this turn. It just doesn't matter. Oh, oh right, right, right. Of because course. Because Gravitum yeah. is going to come out and double stun it. Oh, there's a... Gra I missed the Gravitum in hand. Well, there's not a Gravitum in hand, but there is a... Uh, Felio spell. Felio spell, yeah, which can get a Gravitum immediately. Can you perma Gravitum from there? Can you, like, perma phase into it? Because... I mean, probably. You can get close enough to it, I think. Um, I, that is... Well, actually, you... Yeah. I think you, yes, you can effectively cycle through entirely through the phases to get back to Gravitum in time to keep it stunned. Yeah, the the only reason I, I bring this up is because that is your way to shuffle right now, is that second Aphelios that you would have to play to pull that Gravitum. Right, but if you have the Gravitum, you don't, you all, all of a sudden don't need to... Right, you don't need to shuffle. Yeah, right. so that's, that's where we're at, is just Wait. like... 
trying Wait, to deal with it. Did he just cast star shaping? Wait, is Tanya trolling right now? Um. Wait. I mean, well, no, this just means that Tanya wants to shuffle instead. I mean, this has okay. to be intentional. Like, you know that this watcher is free. Right. Okay. Okay, and we're not at, um, we're not, the, the temple has already been, uh, has already been procced, so yeah, this watcher is attacking. Yeah, also, I mean, this has to be conscious, right? This has to be just a conscious thing that, uh, I guess, Tanya is now going to continually shuffle Aphelios. Okay. Well, Squeebie able is going to be able to obliterate an entire deck on open attack. Oh, he even has a backup Lissandra if need be. I don't know if I like killing the Sparkle Fly. Um, because like. The damage is not what's going to kill you, and the damage is not what you're going to win on. The, you need to stop the shuffle. So I, I think you have to try to kill the, uh, you have to try to kill the champion here in case there's a champion spell, and 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 stop that chain. Right? Um, it doesn't really matter in this case, but yeah, I mean, yeah, wasn't able to kill the Aphelios, but you didn't know if there is a second uh, Talia or not. So generally, right. probably the Talia kill is better. Um. Interestingly, we see Infernum picked up, so looking for that Overwhelm damage, just trying to push more. Uh, this this Watcher, I believe, it, it is just going to obliterate your deck again if you don't yeah. stop it. So we will need to see a Gravitum at some point, uh, unless Tanya yeah. Wannabe is looking to win right now with a Great Beyond. Yeah, needs to cast this... Uh... This buff onto Aphelios or we'll just die and then it won't be an Aphelios spell anymore. But this is actually still going to ha it's still going to happen um, because Ice Shard plus Vile Feast or uh, Ice Shard plus Withering Whale is going to still be able to threaten to kill the Aphelios. Although actually, no, with the buff, with the Severum buff, it'll still live. Hey, great beyond. Not good enough. Yeah, I mean it's it's only an eight eight. Um, you know that's that's cool and all, but no deck, no win. Yeah, this is just over. Unless uh, I mean, it's gonna have to be a uh, a miracle, um, a miracle living legends. I I'm not sure that there is even one that can. Can get there it would have to be a lot of really cheap celestial spells and then yeah. uh i i suppose the destroyer. destroyer but i i don't know if that's yeah. even getting there because the destroyer no, is the well, only one cheap enough that you could play with a bunch of other yeah and we see that that's things. not going to be good enough because there's a spirit journey and an entomb yeah 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 squeebie's gonna have it squeebie gonna be continuing this loser's run Yeah, this is like these games are on a wait, unless no, <laughs> no, the the ice shard proc procking the shields is going to be more than enough here. There's still uh, there's two answers. Still isn't even enough damage uh, between these two because of the oh, tough right. nexus. <laughs> right. So it's I mean, it's it's just not yeah. it's just not going to be enough. I mean, Squeebie. Drop to the loser's bracket in round one as the grindy 80 plus minute match against Susasor and now moves on against Tanya Wannabe. Gonna take the 2 0. I believe the next in line for Squeebie to come knocking is Len.
as it should be a deck out victory after this round. Yep. Yeah. Not even enough damage. And Tiny Wannabe giving the GG and the sad Poro. But even uh, there, there is no way to mess this up. You can just hit skip block and be okay. You can also cast Spirit's Journey if you want to do. Doesn't matter. It's all going to be good. You don't have anything to worry about. I'm going to go for That's, it anyway. No, I mean, yeah. No he's, e either way, he's got it. He knows that it's just one more draw. Yep. Game is done. Squeeby. Continuing the reign of terror in the losers bracket. I mean, maybe this is this will be a you know cephalopod esque losers run. Yeah, all the way back to the losers final. Could see it happen as he takes down wannabe. Len is next. Losers yeah. semifinal will be Squeeby versus Len. Yeah, and I mean, really, uh, I mean, unfortunately for wannabe. The sort of uh, called shot, uh, you know, meta sniper, not quite good enough against the, uh, you know, a Targon deck plus the, you know, just traditional control deck. It's not really uh, what that deck is aimed to beat, but certainly love to see the the call out of, uh, of Wannabe there. And, you know, if he's ever back on a future one, hopefully he'll uh, make a similar call, maybe have better success. But that was a 2 0 by Squeeby there. We saw it. The, Talia deck just not able to, to close it out. Yeah, I mean, uh, spicy lineup from Wannabe. Looked good in the first set we watched it today. Looked looked awesome. Uh, just yeah. didn't have the consistency. Wasn't able to continue the success throughout. Ends up dropping here. Squeeby picking that up, continuing this run. I mean, it, it's it's a miraculous run, right? Lost to Deech in round one. Yeah. Uh, he's got one more match here before he gets his uh, second crack at Deech uh, in the loser's final if he can take down Len. That'll be our next matchup, Squeeby versus Len. Yeah, I mean, definitely, uh, I mean, a storied run by Squeeby, of course. And these matches taking a little bit of extra time. That Hey, that's okay. You get your shot at fight night. You take your time. You play as well as you can. You make it through, and you get the wins that you can that you can scrape, and hey, you love to see it. Um, I mean, a, a storied run for sure, and we're, of course, going to be watching, uh, you know, Squeeby the rest of the way out <laughs> until, yeah. uh, you know, he either wins the tournament or uh, loses uh, and is eliminated. Yeah, we watch Squeeby from here on out or the, the victor takes his place, right? That's just, right. Uh, that's how it goes, basically. Follow him along. I mean, uh, Len, we, we got to see Len earlier mm -hmm. um, actually against Wannabe. We saw Len uh, get completely destroyed by a, a turn three Fiora. Uh, going up against uh, scouts, he, he had no way to answer it. And uh, a very, very close match against the Shreemalis. So Len now getting his chance. He took down Manasia. Now getting his chance, uh, took down uh, Fer Ferretto. And now mm -hmm. he's got his chance against Squeeby, who has been on a tear. But we're going to go to a quick break. When we return, we will have the matchup of Squeeby versus Len. Loser semifinal. Don't go anywhere.